Hey, welcome back to my channel. I am a licensed clinical social worker and substance abuse counselor simply wanting to help therapists become better therapists. In today's video, we are talking about ways to regain client trust. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's talk about ways to regain client trust after a hospitalization. Now, I am going to speak to when a therapist has to hospitalize a client, okay? Don't feel bad, therapist, if you were doing everything in your power to keep the client safe. One of the things that will make you feel more comfortable or put you at ease is that you had the conversation in the first assessment, in the first initial screening, appointment, biopsychosocial meeting, you had the information. You told them that, hey, if I ever believe you're going to seriously hurt yourself or anyone else, that's when I got to breach confidentiality. I got to make sure you're safe. Whatever language it is that you use, however it is that you explain to your client, feel confident and know that, hey, I told my client way back when that this could likely happen. If I thought they were going to hurt themselves, I had to let the people know. I had to call it in. I had to do what I needed to do in order to keep them safe. And also you may have warned them throughout. That may look like if the client was endorsing any suicidal ideation, maybe didn't have a method or didn't have a plan or any intent on hurting or harming themselves, you may have reiterated at that time that, hey, if I feel you're gonna seriously hurt yourself or harm yourself, then I certainly will do what's in my power and do what's necessary in order to keep you safe. Now, is it a pleasant conversation to have when that client is coming back in the door and they're like, you're the one who put me in the hospital? No, it's not a pleasant conversation to have all of the time. It's not. Some clients will feel resentful and feel that we breach their trust okay and that's to be understood and also i've had it where clients were thankful and grateful for having been sent to the hospital to have some more intense level of care it comes with the territory but this is one of the important reasons as to why you should let the clients know offhand that hey i have to do what's necessary when it comes to your safety the next one is misgendering clients now, I have misgendered a client before, okay? And it wasn't until later that they corrected me and they told me, hey, I prefer to be called this because they had recently had a revelation and identify as such pronoun. And so I immediately made the correction and we started from there. I, in fact, am the only person that knows that they identify as that said pronoun. And while it was a new information from, from them and it was new information for me, I immediately made the correction and I was apologetic. I said, I apologize about such and such. I will make that correction right away. And that's the way that I regained their trust. In fact, I made sure to, if I had a slip up, correct it right then. State that I made a slip up and move on that's the way you have real client interaction and you say i'm human i messed up i'll keep trying i'll keep trying and i'll keep trying now while you may not have misgendered someone it may be that you stepped on their toe and they felt some type of way about that because you didn't immediately apologize so it doesn't necessarily have to be specific to misgendering as it is to maybe a client felt a certain type of way about something and you immediately apologize or that you were simply genuine in your approach and you made an effort to move forward and do better. That's it. That's how you regain client trust. Number three, <laughs> long absences. So how do you regain client trust when a client hasn't been there for a while, right? And this is the thing, pick up where you left off, acknowledge that they haven't been there in a while and talk about ways to become stronger. Talk about ways to help them in their treatment journey. How can you support them? This may look like, okay, client hasn't been here in three months. And a lot of times they may be thinking, oh my goodness, my therapist is gonna be so upset with me that I haven't been here in three months, that I haven't checked in, I haven't returned any emails or voice messages or anything like that. And 
It's to accept them. Regain the client trust by accepting them and having communication. Let them know, hey, I'm glad that you're back. I definitely want to talk about what made you fall off of treatment. I definitely want to talk about how your emotional state was during the absence. And I want to talk about ways in which we can bond closer together and talk about things before they get maybe to a point where you don't want to come back to therapy. You know, let me know what's going on. Let's have a conversation. That's the way you regain client trust, conversation, communication. You're going to hear me talk about that all throughout this video. That's the main point. Accept them back with open arms. Let them know what's going on and ways to move on. That's it. Number four, how do you regain client trust when there has been a big challenge from the therapist when you've pushed a little bit more than the client was comfortable with? How do you do this? Okay, you do it and you feel uncomfortable and you do it anyway. So after you as a therapist have made the sound decision to challenge a client or to nudge them just a little bit more than they're used to, be confident in that. Be confident in that. It may and it probably is feeling very unpleasant for them because they are used to saying in a one position that they have probably developed since childhood and they're not used to going the extra step. But you as the clinician, as the expert have said, I'm going to push my client. I'm going to push you a little bit further. I'm going to challenge you to do something different. I'm going to challenge you to think in a different way. I'm going to call you out on something. I'm going to call you out. How do you regain client trust? You let them know where you're coming from. You let them know, hey, we talked about this again. This goes back to establishing that rapport and the conversation that you might have with your client when it comes to your treatment approach. You will tell them, hey, there'll be times where I'm going to push you. I got you. I got you. I'm here with you. But there may be times where I'm going to push you into an uncomfortable position or state. OK, have the conversation. It's bound to happen that you're going to have a client feel uncomfortable, that, that you're going to challenge them and they might resist. They might pull back. They might not show back up. You did what was ethical. You did what was clinically sound and you felt confident in it. There you go. How do you regain client trust after they have said or alluded to their needs not being met? That's the big one. <laughs> I've been there. I'm sure you have been there, too. Now, what happens when a client says, we're not a good fit or I don't know if this is the right treatment approach for me or I don't know if this if you are the right clinician for me. What do you do? How do you move on? How do you move on with trust and dignity and integrity? You have a conversation. You talk to them and you say, OK, let's talk about how you feel your needs aren't getting met. Let's talk about ways in which you would like them to be met. Let's talk about ways in which I might be able to help you get them met. And it may not work in the favor of the clinician. And, and we're OK with that. We, we know how to move and how to navigate these difficult conversations. Right. Or at least we're learning to. So it is definitely always in the best interest of the client. If a client feels that there needs there needs to be a different treatment approach, explore it. If the client feels that they need to seek out another clinician, explore it. OK, it may definitely have something to do with the client and their resistance. It may have something to do with the therapist and their treatment approach, and it may just not be a good match. What we need to acknowledge is that that took a whole lot of strength for their client to say, we not jiving <laughs> or my needs aren't being met. OK, and maybe they have a clear idea of how they need their needs to get met. Maybe they don't. And they're at a crossroads, too. So there may need to be some self-reflection and introspection from the client in order to honestly come into the treatment session, in order to be willing to receive information. So there may there could be a lot of different variations. But how do you have honest conversations? How do you have conversations with your clients after they have felt some type of way? These are all great things to talk about and we will continue talking about. Stay tuned for more social work tips, how to be a better clinician overall. I'll see you later. Bye bye.